Hello, this is Randall Root, and this video is about Exercise 7.1. In uh, Exercise 7.1, your job is to create a SSIS pro uh, project. Now, if you've been following along in the book and you've done all the uh, all the steps, um, you're fine. You can just start right from here. But if for some reason you've had some problems with the earlier steps, or if uh, you're just kind of jumping to the good parts for yourself, then you can go ahead and use my uh, chapter 6 completed version so to get started. So what I would do is I would just go ahead and uh, take chapter 6, uh, grab a hold of the publication industry's completed version, and uh, move that out to the BI Solutions folder. And that should bring us up to speed. Now, of course, um, there'll be a few things. First of all, you'll need to have the um, the database created. So you probably want to go ahead and open up the ETL code for future use and the script that creates the uh, the database. So I'll open up both those. I've double clicked on uh, both the files, and and SQL Server Management Studio is going to try to open. Uh, you know, sometimes it succeeds and actually opens the file, but more often than not. What happens is that um, it opens, but the files don't load. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. It's just kind of annoying. It's just a matter of going through and double-clicking on it again. Hey, look, this time I got lucky. Nice. Heck, on both of them, too. Man, I'm feeling feeling good here. That usually doesn't happen. Anyway, as I said, if they didn't open for some reason, it's not that uh, big a deal. All you have to do is just come back and double-click on them again the second time they open. It just doesn't like opening them opening the files and opening Visual uh, Management Studio all at the same time. So the first file, of course, to run would be the one that creates the Pub's DW Data Warehouse. So create DW Pub Sales. And that would go through, drop the existing database, and create it as per the book's instructions. So you don't have to do this. It's only for times where you uh, didn't get around to completing the earlier chapters. Next. The ETL code that was described in the preceding chapter um, is all made out for you here. And we're going to use this code to create the SSIS project. We don't need it immediately, but it's not a bad idea to kind of have it open. This code is uh, created and tested uh, so that it should be able to go right into your SSIS package. And again, this is only necessary if you didn't make your own version uh, last time. Okay, now. Uh, I need to go and, um, as it says here, open up the project. So I'll click and open the solution. It has a couple different ways to do it, but uh, my favorite is just go through and double click on the SLN file. Now, in a few seconds, it'll open. It may take a while. Sometimes Visual Studio is a little slow if you haven't opened it for a while. But then once you're done, you'll see that you have the various different documents all lined up and kind of ready to go. You know, the um, one of the thing we did in the last chapter was to go through and create the uh, the ETL script, and I, I don't see it here, but certainly I know it's in the the folder, so I could just go ahead and add it to the solution, um, an existing item, and you know bring it in and be able to see it. Let's see, there it is. Be able to see it right from Visual Studio, and that's convenient. But remember that you um, a lot of times this doesn't work in everybody's copy of Visual Studio. So I'll do it here and just to show you what happens. My installation is working fine. I don't know how I get so lucky on this, but most of the time it, it works. In fact, I haven't got a computer that it doesn't. But occasionally, more occasionally I like it to happen. It uh, won't allow you to like use the code directly from Visual Studio because of your installation. Now, you can try uninstalling it, reinstalling it, and the like. But in the end, it's probably not worth your time. So what you can do is you can just do what I showed you a second ago. Just open up that same file and manage with Studio. It's designed to read those SQL files. Uh, Visual Studio, it was designed to read all kinds of files. SQL was just an add-on. And if the add-on isn't configured correctly, it just doesn't work. All you get is it just looks like a regular text file. So it's an option. Don't let it bother you if, for some reason, 
it's not displaying correctly. But I'll tell you what we need to do. We have the solution, but we don't have a project yet for SSIS. So we have all the documentation we've made to get ready for uh, creating these projects. But now I'm going to go ahead and add a new project to the solution. So I right click and say new project. And I go through and I choose the business intelligence integration services project and I give it a name such as um, I think I called it pub sales ETL. You know I probably should look in the book and see what the heck I did call it. Uh, where are you? You know, the sound effects sound really good. Looks like I called it some fancy name, ETL Process for DW Pub Sales. My, my, my. Wait a second, I didn't call it that. I called it this. DW Pub Sales. There we go. Okay, that'll make the, the project inside my solution. Now, the big thing was, is I add it to the solution by going through and, and clicking the option uh, on Solution Explorer and adding it. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Just follow the instructions, it should be fine. Now, once it gets made, you'll get a um, an empty project file. Then, you know, it's kind of blank, so it's kind of uh, intimidating, perhaps. Also, you get this nice little welcome uh, to SSIS, and you can click on the little links, and they'll take you to tutorials. It's pretty cool, but not necessary. So you can just close that down, and you can always get it back. Getting started. Now, what you do is you drag and drop things from the toolbox. Now, the um, one of the things I have you do first of all is just go through and rename the project. I did have some grandiose name for this one. It's ETL Process for DW Pub Sales. Okay, so I'll copy that because I'm way too lazy to type it out, and I'll paste it. Oh, sure I will. Rename it and paste it right here. There we go. Okay, notice that it uh, changes the name here and it's ready to go. Now we go to the toolbox. It's a little confusing because there's more than one toolbox. You see, Visual Studio, if you've worked with it before, has a toolbox. But um, SSIS in 2012 decided not to use it. Instead, they made their own toolbox, which, uh, heck, I can't even see right now. That's because the focus is on Visual Studio and not on my package. Watch what happens when I click on the package. Okay, let's click on the package and then the menu comes alive and I have options. I can get to the toolbox now. So that's uh, the, kind of the first step, just getting it all set up. And then um, kind of what I recommend you doing is just kind of uh, explore the environment a little bit. Click on a few tabs, etc. Remember, worst case scenario, you just have to go back and do it again. But um, it is a very complex complex piece of software. so. Spend a little bit of time getting used to it. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful, and uh, I'll move on to the next video.